Hello, dear friends. A great welcome to this series on seismic assessment of various connections using Idea Statica. Myself, Jarad P. This is tutorial number 31 and covers the seismic assessment of a hunched bolted end plate connection for an exterior beam column joint, following the guidelines described in EN 19931 and EN 19981. So, let us start Idea Statica tutorial number 31. Please note that the link for the playlist for all the early tutorials is given under the description of this video. So the beam column connection that is considered in this tutorial is given here. It is a, essentially is a hunch end plate bottle connection for an exterior joint. So as discussed in the early tutorials, the seismic assessment procedure essentially consists of designing a given joint, then classifying the design connection based on its strength as well as the stiffness, and finally performing the necessary checks for the calculation of the joint moment of resistance as per capacity design procedure for pre-selected dissipative components. So first of all, a frame analysis is carried out for the entire structure and uh, the design critical forces corresponding to the connection design are obtained and a connection is designed as per the provisions set out in EN 1993-18-2005. So the design connection is shown here. Essentially, the column is HB 360 and the connecting beam is IPE 500. It is essentially is an end plate bolter connection and uh, the end plate is having a thickness of 35 and the connection is provided with a, a set of 12 numbers of uh, M33 grade 10.9 volts. The uh, connecting beam is provided with a haunch of uh, 200 mm height and 300 mm length and uh, the haunch plate is also provided with a bottom flange plate and whose thickness corresponds to the beam flange thickness. The beam is also provided with a, a web stiffener of a 10 mm thick. And coming to the column to improve its uh, web panel shear capacity, it is uh, provided with a continuity plate of uh, 50 mm, two numbers, one corresponding to the top flange and the other corresponding to the location of the haunch. And the column web is also provided with the 12 thick doubler plates. And uh, the elevation of this uh, end plate is uh, provided over here. It is a basic, basically a plate of 260 mm wide by 920 mm height. So going to the step number two, we need to find out what will be the strength of the design joint using the component method, very specifically following the guidelines of clause 6.1 of EN 1993-18-2005. And now going to the connecting beam IP500, its a plastic moment of resistance is computed to be 779 kN meter without consideration of our strength. If you do consider the over strength and the strain hardening, its moment of resistance will be calculated to be 1168 kN. The strain hardening factors as well as the material over strength will be taken directly from the Euro codes. Now, a component by component analysis is being carried out. Now, in this case, it is obtained that uh, the row 1 bolts will have a resistance of a 712 kN. This is the row 1 of the bolts, that's the most exterior one. And the decisive component that governs this resistance will be the column flange in bending. Now going to the row 2, its resistance is calculated to be 424 kN and the decisive component in this case will be the haunch flange in compression. So as can be seen, the row 2 bolts have got a much less resistance compared to row 1 bolts and in this case, we are unable to mobilize any kind of resistance from the third row just because in such a case, uh, we need to improve the dimensions of the haunch because we find that the decisive component that governs the mobilization of the row 3 will be the haunch flange in compression. Accordingly, the plastic moment of resistance of the connection is worked out to be 791 kN meter and this is greater than 779 kN meter which is nothing but the plastic strength of the connecting beam and here, 
Accordingly, as per the common method, we can classify the connection as an equal strength connection because the connection has a moment of resistance that is equal to the moment of resistance or the positive moment of resistance of the connecting beam IP500. Further, the column web panel capacity, which is computed to be 1176 kN, is good enough to meet the column shear demand of 1120 kN arising from the beam column joint moment of resistance of a 799 91 kN Now we proceed for the step 3 of uh, the assessment procedure wherein we go for uh, the classification of the stiffness of the connection. In this case, the initial stiffness of the connection works out to be almost infinity. So as is being demonstrated in this curve, it's almost this M5 curve, it's almost vertical in the beginning. So its initial stiffness is infinity. Now as per the EN1993-18 regulation, the limiting value in this case for a rigid connection of a 6 meter span beam is worked out to be 421.8 mega newton meter per radians. Accordingly, we can classify the desired connection as a rigid connection. And the calculation shows that the connection has got a rotation capacity of 64 milli radians. And next, we shall go for uh, the implementation of uh, the capacity design calculation using the idea statica. Before using the idea statica, it is important that we calculate the design forces to be applied to the connecting beam. So in this case, we assume that or we perceive the formation of a plastic hinge just at the location of the hinge. And accordingly, assuming a plastic moment of resistance of MP, which includes both the overstrength as well as the strain hardening, we work out the MP values and the corresponding design forces. And the same will be applied at just at the location corresponding to the end of the hunch sawn. And the calculated values works out to be MP0 1168 kN meter, and which takes care of the overstrength as well as the strain hardening. And the corresponding shear is worked out to be 393 kN. And this design forces for the capacity design verification, it will be applied just at the hunch location, which works out to be 525 mm from the column center line. So an idea statica verification is carried out which shows that all the non-dissipative components are, are acceptable or passes all the checks and in this case we have we consider the formation or we expect the formation of the plastic hinge in the connective beam and accordingly the column as well as the end place will be the non-dissipative components for which the checks are required to be carried out. And in this case, the non dissipative components has got a maximum plastic strain of 2.5%, that is less than 5%, and the boards has got a utility ratio of 99.9. .9. Therefore, the descent connection passes all the checks, and we conclude that the connection can be considered as the rigid full strength connection. So, now let me take you to the implementation of the what we call as the capacity design approach in the idea statica. So, the model developed in idea statica is shown here. Now, as already explained, the column is essentially is an HB 360 profile and uh, the beam is an IP500 member and uh, in this case, the rules are applied as discussed at a position of 525 mm that is uh, corresponding to the location of the hinge and the load effects uh, are nothing but uh, uh, these are uh, the loads that, is, uh, that are already calculated and in this case, we have created two load cases that is uh, one corresponding to uh, there's a hogging moment and the other corresponding to a sagging moment. And here uh, the applied moment is 1168 kN meter and the associated uh, shear load that is applied at the Hans location is 393 kN. And this corresponds to the other case which corresponds to just reversing the signs of uh, the moments as, the, as well as the shears. And the uh, end plates are being modeled uh, through the uh, what we call as the end plate manufacturing operation and has got a thickness of 35 mm and it is provided 33 10.9 uh, volts and uh, we have provided the, the continuity as well as what we call as the hunch plates using the Whitener manufacturing operation and the column stiffness they are being generated through the stiffness manufacturing operation and they are having a thickness of 15 mm and then we have uh, generated the so-called uh, the column uh, web plate that's what we call as the doubler plates 
uh, using uh, the stiffening plate pan for spin operation. And finally, coming to the dissipative components. So for this uh, exercise, we have chosen we consider uh, the formation of the plus change, the connecting beam, and accordingly, the dissipative component is being chosen as the connecting beam of IP500. And uh, the corresponding straight hardening factor uh, that we assume is 1.2. Now, uh, so let us go for uh, the review of the results obtained from the capacity design. So this is the distribution of the strain profile as uh, shown here. It is the, the distribution of the plastic strain uh, among different component members. So it is very clear that uh, here, the much of the inelastic strain is concentrated in the connecting beam. And as expected, we have a plastic hinge lo location formed just at the location of uh, the hunch. And here we find that uh, as far as the connecting beam is concerned, the strain have gone up to a level of a certain percentage. And uh, we find that uh, the maximum plastic strain in the non dissipative uh, members it is a 2.5 percentage. So if you want to find out which component uh, is critical here, you can straight away go to the plates and we can also see the distribution of uh, uh, the strains. So here we find that, for example, we have got a plastic strain of 2.4 in the column. So in the column flange member, we have got a strain of uh, 2.4, 2.4 and uh, Okay, and then uh, we have uh, uh, 2.5. 2.5 is uh, is a widen is a widen. That is a stiffener location. So, so the critical components what we find uh, in the case of the non dissipative members are the column flange as well as uh, the stiffener, wherein we find that the strains are of the order of 2.2 percentage. And further moving down, we find that the other members are alright. And now. Coming to the dissipative members, we have seen that uh, the strains have uh, taken up, have gone up to a level of 6.9 percentage. Now, uh, going to the deformed shape, so let us just see how the deformed shape look like. Yes, so you can see that, for example, in our uh, present case, we find that uh, the case of uh, the sacking moment is very critical, and uh, so as is being indicated by the extreme load case. So we have generated two loading conditions, one corresponding to the sagging and the other corresponding to the hogging moment. And this is the, what we call as the deformed shape of the connecting beam. So this clearly indicates the formation of the plastic hinge just at the hinge location as expected. And uh, we can also see uh, what we call as uh, the report session. So we can just generate a report for this uh, tutorial, uh, wherein we'll be able to see Okay, the strain levels, the distribution of the uh, stresses in the various components, and uh, as expected, uh, what are the dissipative components, etc. So the review of the results uh, through the reports section, a, an in-depth analysis is very much required because that only provides us, yes, the calculations are being uh, what we call as uh, assessed in the proper uh, way. So let us uh, go into the report. So you can say that here, so this is a column uh, beam model that is used for the capacity design. And uh, here we can find that uh, the beam uh, flanges and the webs are uh, the so-called uh, dissipative components. And they are marked with a material of S355 star. And S355 star basically indicates the same grid of the material. Only difference is that here we have considered an over strength factor 1.25 as well as a strain hardening factor 1.2 as per the Euro European Court regulations. And, uh, this is uh, the distribution of uh, the stresses. Okay, as uh, we can say that here uh, we have uh, the, the stresses, the majority of the stresses being getting concentrated in the connecting beam. And uh, here we can see that this is the distribution of the strains. And we find that uh, as expected, uh, the sagging moment was uh, very critical. And uh, we find that uh, the strains of the order of up to say 7.26 percentage is getting concentrated in the bottom flange of the connecting beam. So this is uh, the entire stress distribution and uh, this provides uh, the check for the various bolts corresponding to the capacity design loads. And we find here that uh, the maximum, uh, what we call as the utility ratio, it's of the order of 99.9, .9, which is basically in B11 and B12, that is the bottommost row, that is uh, corresponding to a critical, uh, what we call as a sagging moment. And um, here uh, we find that uh, the bolts are uh, therefore okay. And this report suggests that uh, all the uh, non dissipative components uh, passes all the checks. And uh, the, as expected, the dissipative uh, action takes place in the connecting beam. And we find that the hinge 
uh, formation takes place approximately very near to the sun of the haunch and uh, and uh, therefore uh, you can classify this uh, connection as uh, a full uh, strength as well as a rigid connection so that's all uh, regarding uh, the st idea static uh, a portion of uh, the capacity uh, design so um, we will uh, come up with a new tutorial uh, for an uh, interior uh, column joint uh, in the next time so till then bye